Today we're going to be talking about conditional branches in RPG Maker MV and how you can use them to add more immersive value to your game. Firstly, if you're new to my channel and you love RPG Maker content and you're looking for some cool tips, tricks, tutorials and just general discussion about RPG Maker, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you can be notified whenever I post a new video. This video is a request from James, so thank you James and if anyone else has any other video requests then let me know down below in the comments. So what is a conditional branch? Well, you can find it in the event settings under the first tab called conditional branch and what it allows you to do is set a condition for something. For example, if I want to leave this room, something else must be done first. I'll show you an example of that later. There are multiple different conditions you can set to be accomplished. For example, we can start off with switches or variables. The difference between a switch is it's either on or off. So if I wanted to create a new switch, I would go talked to mum and then that would either be on or off. A variable on the other hand is something that we can count. So I can say if variable windows closed is equal to 3 then something else happens. The next is a self switch which affects this event only and you can test whether switch A, B, C or D is on or off. Then there is a timer. If a timer is greater than or less than a certain time then something happens. These are conditions. You're creating conditions for something else to happen. Under the second tab, it's about the actor. So if actor Harold is in the party, then something happens. If Harold's name is Tom, then something happens. If his class is, if his skill is, these are all conditions. If this, then do something else. Under the next tab, we have enemy which is if enemy such and such has appeared or is in the state of guard, then do something else. That one you'd mainly only use for battles. Then we have character. If the character, the player, this event, father, mother, sister, if they are facing in a certain direction, then something will happen. If a specific vehicle is being driven, then something will happen. And in the last conditional branch tab, you have probably the most options. If gold is greater than a certain amount, something will happen. If you have a certain item, something will happen. If you have a certain weapon, armor, something will happen. Then if you press a certain button, okay, shift, cancel, down, left, right. If one of these is pressed, something will happen. When you're creating a conditional branch, what you're dictating is what the condition is. Then you have script. This one we won't touch on because this deals more with coding. Now we know what a condition is, let's get into some examples where I show you how you can use them. The first example we're going to use is that this is the main character and this is the main character's sister. She is going to ask him to get a book. If he tries to come down the hallway without getting the book, she will call out and yell at him to get the book. So he must come back over, get the book, give it to her, and that is him meeting the condition. Then when he tries to go down the hallway, after he's met that condition, he'll be able to go through. So how do we do this? First, we need to set up the condition. So we're going to create an empty event right here. We're going to select the conditional branch option, and then we're going to select switch. What we'll do is click here and create a new switch, and we're just going to call it book for sister. Hit apply, and there we've created a condition. Now what we're going to do is create an else branch. Click that button there and hit OK. So here you've got two things. If book for sister is on, then do a thing. Otherwise, do a different thing. So we're going to start with this one here, which is if this condition isn't on, then some text will appear telling the player to go backwards. Then his sister will call out, telling him to get the book for her. Then... When he hits this tile, we're going to create a movement route and get the player to step backwards. So, one step backwards. That means if he tries to step on this tile again without having book for sister on, then it's going to say the same thing in this else section. So, let's test that out. So, let's now try and walk down the hall. The second we touch that event, she's going to come up and say, hurry, please, I want to read the book. And then you're going to step backwards. And it's going to keep happening until you meet the condition, which is making that switch, sister's book, on. So let's set up a bit of context first. We'll just make a quick cutscene of her shouting out asking for the book on his bookshelf. Mm. 
Now that we've done that, let's just make the sister have some dialogue if you haven't retrieved her book yet. If you haven't retrieved her book yet, she's just going to say, Do you have my book yet? Or yeet. That definitely says yeet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the item, the book for the sister. So we're going to go over here into settings, we're going to scroll over to items, and we're going to change the maximum value so we can create a new item. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and create the item for the book. We're going to make this a key item, and it is not going to be consumable. There is going to be no scope, and you can never use this. Now, we want to make it so when the character comes to his bookshelf, he's able to retrieve that book. So we're going to create a new event page just right here on top of the bottom part of his bookshelf. We want it to activate when the character hits the action button, and we want the priority to be the same as the characters. Doing this will allow you to interact with it as it were another NPC. If it was above or below the character, you wouldn't be able to interact with it. Then we're just going to use this event to give the player an item. So go over into the events page, then on the first tab, click change items. We're going to scroll over to plants and farmers, the book we've created, and we're going to increase the item by one. Then, just to end the event so he doesn't get multiple copies of the same book, we're going to set a self switch. So control self switch A, new event page, control self switch A. What that does is once the player's retrieved the book, nothing will happen when he tries to click on the bookshelf again. Just quickly, before we load into the game, something I forgot to do earlier was when we receive the book, we want a sound effect to play and some text to appear. So, we're going to, in here, insert some text. You got a book, Plants and Farmers, and it's going to be dim, and it's going to be in the middle of the screen. Then, on top of that, we're also going to add a sound effect. We're going to be using item 3. Hit OK, and then we're done. We'll load this up into game and see how it goes. Brother, can I please borrow your book on plants? Okay, sister, let me get it from my bookshelf. Alright, so now we're going to try and walk down the hallway. Hurry up, please, I really want to read that book. So we can't go down the hallway, and she's going to keep repeating that. So let's go talk to her and see what she has to say. Do you have my book? Yeet! Alright, she's definitely saying yeet. Now if we go over to this bookcase, there we go, you got a book. Plants and Farmers. If I try and do that again, nothing's happening. So now let's go give her the book. Thank you, she said. So let's try and go down the hallway now. Yep, we can now go down the hallway. So that's one of the ways you can use conditional branches to set a condition. For one thing to happen, something else must happen first. We used two examples of conditional branches here. The first one we used was that unless a switch was turned on, we couldn't pass this hallway. The second one we used was unless we got this book, she wouldn't activate the switch. Again, just real quickly, once we give the sister the book, what we're going to do is go over to page number one on the events tab, change items, and instead of increase, we're going to hit decrease. We're just going to remove that book from the inventory. Moving on, let's see what else we can do. Next, we're going to be looking at variables. Variables, unlike a switch being turned on and off, variables is a counter. So what we're going to do is make Harold have to talk to his three family members each, and when he does that, something else will trigger. So to do this, we're just going to create an event. We'll create it right here, just on the roof. And this is only going to occur right here where we see the conditions, variable. What we're going to look for is family talked to. And then we're going to set that number to three. Once your family has been talked to three times, then something else will happen. His mum is going to call out Watashi wa Shinagami desu. And we're going to set this as a auto run. And then after this, when she says dinner will be ready in one minute, We'll come back to that later. But firstly, we need to focus on this here, which is the variable. That's the condition. The condition is, this variable needs to be 3. Now at the moment, by standard, this variable equals 0. So we need to get that to 3. So how are we going to do that? Firstly, we'll set up some context. So we'll go back over to this event here in the hallway. And where it says, if book is on, and there's nothing, we're going to put some text. I should talk to everyone, is what Harold's going to say. 
And to make sure he doesn't repeat that text every time he walks up and down the hallway, we're just going to insert a self switch A, new event page, self switch A. Now that the context is set, we need to get this variable here up to three when it's currently at zero. We're just gonna go over here back to the sister and on her third event page where she says all of this, we're just going to add in an extra line. Instead of control switches, this time we're going to click control variables. Now don't get too intimidated by this, we're not gonna do much here. We're going to select the variable we want to manipulate, which is family talk to, and we're going to add one. After we do this, we're going to then go control self switch B, because we've already used self switch A, and on control self switch B in a new event page, don't forget to load her image. Condition B, she's just gonna say mura, 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 mura. And we won't add a control variable afterwards. What we will do is copy this onto our dashboard by hitting control C after selecting it. And then we're gonna go over to another family member. So let's click on his mum. She'll say something like Baka Shinji-kun. And then we're just gonna click below that and hit control V, which will paste this control variable, talked to family, plus one. Then we're gonna go control self switch A, new event page, self switch A is the condition, load up her image, and she's gonna say Anato wa hentai. And then we're just gonna do the same thing over here for the father, give him some text, and he's just gonna say Yeet! And then below that, we'll hit control V to add in the control variable talk to family. We're gonna do another control self switch A, another new event page. Don't forget to load up his image. And he's gonna say, <coughs> sorry, I don't know what came over me. And there we have it. We've got the variable talked to family being added once with the sister, twice with the mother, and then thrice with the father. So now we're gonna go back over to this original event over here, which says once this happens, family talk to is equal to three. His mum's just gonna say, Not this Oji. Not this Oji. And now we're gonna do something fun. After she says this, we're going to create a timer. Go down to control timer. We're just gonna set it for one minute. Then we're just gonna hit self switch A, just so this event doesn't repeat itself because it's on auto run. New event page, self switch A. And what that's going to do is start a timer. So let's load up the game and see how that goes. Oh, now firstly, we are gonna have to do this quest for our sister. So if we don't go through here, oh, she wants the book. All right, so we'll get the book for her. And then we're gonna go through the hallway where he's gonna say, I should talk to my family. I should talk to everyone. Now, if we go back over that, nothing will happen. So you'll notice nothing is happening. So let's talk to our family three times to add the variables. I love this book, she says. Plants are cool. So that's already added one to the variable. Now let's talk to mum. I'm cooking dinner, it'll be ready soon. I said soon. Now we've added two variables. Now once we talk to the father, the other event will trigger. Sorry, I don't know what came over me. Looks like I forgot a little bit of eventing, so let's go back and fix that. I see, we forgot to turn his self switch A on. Very important, very important. All right, let's try this again, shall we? For the moment of truth, yeet. Yep, and now we see that the event, once the variable has reached three, dinner will be ready in one minute. And now in the top right corner, we have a timer. How cool is that? Now, the last thing we're gonna do is make sure that when this timer reaches zero, something happens. So let's do that right now. Now you can do it within the same event where you've got the timer starting, but for simplicity's sake, we're going to create a new event. This one, under the trigger, we're going to hit parallel process. Then in the events page, we're going to go down to conditional branch and timer. And if timer is less than one second, the screen's going to fade out and then we're going to move all of the NPCs over to the dinner table. So we're going to set event location, we're going to set father, and then we're going to set his location. So he's gonna be over here, and he's going to be facing right. Let's quickly do the same with the rest of them. And finally, to move the player, instead of set event location, we're going to transfer the player to the new location, and he'll face left. 
Once we set all of this up, we're just going to leave the characters waiting for one second or 60 frames, and then we're going to fade it back in. And once it fades in, Mum's just gonna say, Kimi no na wa sugoi. By the way guys, if you haven't already, scroll down just a little bit and hit that thumbs up like button, because it really helps out with getting my videos out to more people. Now we're going to self switch A, as we always do, new event page, condition, self switch A. Now if we've done everything correctly, all of these events and conditions should work, so let's load this up. Brother, can I please borrow your books on plants? Okay sister, let me get it from my bookshelf. We can't walk down the hallway. Hurry, please, I really want to read that book. Thank you. Hmm, I should talk to everyone. I love this book. I'm cooking dinner. It will be ready soon. Yeet! Dinner will be ready in one minute. Alright, there we go. We've got the countdown in the top right hand corner of the screen. This is counting down to madness. If everything works, if all my events are correct, by the time this reaches zero, we will have created a conditional timer. Wow, you never realise how long a minute is until you have to sit there for a minute. Anyone else excited for RPG Maker MZ? I am. Come on. Alright, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Bam! And there we have it. I hope you guys have learned something today. Once again, real quickly, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon because with RPG Maker MZ coming out very soon, I have literally booked in two weeks off work so I can make you some wonderful content. Peace out.